Hey, Sarah. Hi. So this is Sarah Correa's mom, right? Am I saying it right? That's it. Correa's mom. Yep. That's Correa's it. mom. We were just say, laughing, saying how I never said anyone's last name, except when I gave coach cards, right? <laughs> yes. Stumble yes. over it. That would be the you one. You have to write the names on it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, uh, we were just known as Sarah and Nate in, in birth class. Yeah. So you took my class in December 6th, I think was the start date, 2014. I'm pregnant with your daughter and um, uh, now she's almost seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just want to ask you a little bit, like, how did you find the Bradley method? So my mother was actually a birth coach back in, back in her day. And so, yes, yeah, she was a Lamaze coach. And so when, uh, when I got pregnant, that was kind of her first, her first word of advice was find a birth class. Like you want to take a birth class. It's kind of a non-negotiable do it. And it was actually one of the midwives. So we used the UCLA midwives, um, for our care team. And it was actually one of the midwives up at UCLA who suggested a Bradley method class because she could she could tell that we wanted to be as prepared as possible and she said you know there's different there's different um methods and she said the the Bradley method is the one that's going to be like the most comprehensive you're going to spend a lot of time learning about the process and you will be ultra prepared and then I think we just kind of did like an internet search and your name popped up and the rest is history I, I'm also interested in your cho- choice of a midwife because that's fairly uncommon. Um, there aren't a lot of midwifery programs. A lot of people don't know about midwives. They know everyone has an obstetrician. Was that like an easy um, uh, choice for you or did you yeah. waver on that? Is that because your mother's influence or how did you come yeah. about that choice as well? So I'm the youngest of five and my mom, uh, she I think four out of her five kids were born at home with a midwife ah so but what's interesting is my husband comes from kind of the opposite side of the spectrum where his mom had two c-sections in the hospital and so uh he was very kind of hesitant about the idea of home birth which I initially was leaning towards was a home birth just because you know growing up with a mom who kind of touted touted that I I thought that that's what I wanted to do but my husband was very very hesitant about the idea and um so the UCLA midwives seemed like kind of a happy medium where I would be giving birth in a hospital but I would still have a midwife and um it would be more of like a woman-led childbirth situation yeah I think that's interesting right I think I don't think that's uncommon that um even with the, the idea of natural birth right that sometimes I mean dads definitely unless they have a background in it they know they often feel uncomfortable in and out of um institutional birth out of hospital birth and so there's this compromise that kind of goes on in negotiating that sometimes it it was it was it was definitely a compromise because like I said I I kind of had my heart set on this you know home birth and um but I it was very, very, it was something that was very, very important to him that he, he needed to feel safe. And that was not uh, something that he felt safe or comfortable with. And so I, I think that once we kind of started looking into it, we went and we met them or we met, you know, a couple of them. um, And he started to really, he started to really lean into the idea of like a natural birth. And then, um, I think that once he realized that the Bradley method really included him, you know, he would play a big role in that. I think he was sold. He was sold on the idea. So it all worked out. It all worked out. Did he feel uncomfortable with the idea concept of a midwife versus a doctor? Or was he, was that, that a compromise on his part? Like, well, you're, I you're think giving that, here and he's giving there, or he's like, yeah, you, you know this. Yeah. So I think that initially he, I don't think the idea of a midwife, um, made him nervous per se, but I think that he had a very, um, 
he had a different idea of what a midwife was, you know, in his mind, a midwife was like this very hippy dippy, you know, they would come and they would be there and they might do some like, you know, witchcraft. Magic? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> witchcraft, yes. Exactly. Bring some like oils and herbs and, you know, they wouldn't really know anything about the, you know, physiologic, physiological process of childbirth. They would just kind of be there to catch a baby. Right. Uh, and, but I think that once he did a little research and, you know, that all of the midwives are, are um, MSNs, they all have master's degrees. They all have a ton of experience. They all actually know what they're doing. They know the process, they know the body. Um, and I think that, you know, Nate's, Nate is a very research oriented person. Once he sees like the data and the numbers, he can, he can get on board with something. And that's kind of how it was with the midwives. Okay, good. So, so you have a midwife, um, mm -hmm. and then you decide to embark on a Bradley class, which, yes. you know, I teach the full 12 week class. So I never taught a shortened series. So is that like something that you guys like, yeah, that's great. Or were you guys like, oh, <laughs> I was stoked. I mean, as soon as I found out that it was going to be 12 weeks and I don't remember, was it a four hour class? Was it four hours a week? No, so you guys were in my first several years. The class was, is, is I'm now down to two and a half hours. So okay. the early years I did, my class did go close to three hours. So, yeah. but, and then by the time you talk with people and leave and drove, I, it probably was at least four hours of your. Yes. Day, yeah. Right. But like actual, actual learning. I mean, that's 36 hours of, of learning, you know? And, um, to me, that was, I was, that was very, very appealing. And at that point, Nate had kind of, he was, he was on board with this, like, you know, husband as the advocate, as the support person. And, um, and yeah, he, he, he got pretty excited about it. Once we got at, like out of that first class, when he kind of saw what it was going to be about, he was, he was definitely on board. He got on board. Always oh, getting through that first class, right? Like, yeah, it, your, it, your teacher going to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, you know, I, I never really questioned the idea of a natural birth. I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, in my mind, the more prepared I was, the more likely I was going to have the outcome that I wanted, which, you know, ended up being the truth. Um, and so I, the, the whole, the whole idea of the Bradley method with the diet, with, you know, the borderline being over-prepared, um, you know, just the, the advocacy, all of it was, you know, I never, I never doubted it. Once I figured it out, I never doubted it. And remind me, I don't think you guys had a doula, right? So I feel like no, that was, well, that was kind of your whole, your whole thing is the husband is pretty much the doula in this yeah. situation, yeah. you know? And, um, so no, we did not have a doula. We, we only had Nate and my mom and the midwife in the room when Eleanor was born. And your mother was there too. Oh, so that's something I didn't know. So that's really nice. I've had a couple yeah. of people who've had their mother who are very close. Not everyone has that type of relationship. Yes. Oh, there was no doubt. There was no we doubt. With your mother, but yeah. that's, that must've been a source of, um, it was wonderful. Know. It was wonderful. And it's, it's, and I know we'll get into it a little bit more later, but that is something now that I'm seeing a lot less of because of, you know, the pandemic. Yeah. It's, uh, there aren't there, people are not able to have as much of a support system in the birth, you know, during the birth as, as I was able to have. And I feel more and more fortunate every day that I was able to have that support system. It makes a difference, especially Absolutely. when it's so meaningful to you, like your mother, who mm -hmm. was probably a source of strength, you know what I mean? Yes. And comfort yeah. for you. Yes. Um, yeah. So then tell me a little bit about like your birth. Like when was your due date? Where, when did you, how did you start labor? Um, any details you want to share? Um, yeah. Uh, so my due date was April 8th, which I believe was actually another couple in our, in the Bradley class. They had the same due date as we did. Uh, and on April, the evening of April 6th, I had what's called term prom, which means that uh, I was full term, but my water broke before I started having contractions. And um, so initially, 
it was a little bit stressful because we went into the hospital and basically the first thing the nurse told me was you're zero centimeters dilated. And if you don't start uh, progressing soon, you're going to have to be induced. Oh. And, but coming from the background that I came from, uh, both Nate and I were very aware that that wasn't necessarily the case, that we had more time than they were, they were letting on. But uh, I started doing laps around the hospital, the unit, and my contractions came on very fast and very hard. And um, that was probably about midnight that we got checked into the hospital and Eleanor was born at 8.04 the next morning. Oh, wow. So and when, yeah. did, when, did your, when did your water break? So my water broke about, it was about 9 p.m. the night before. Okay. That's a fast labor. Actually. It was, it was really fast, but I was also very, very determined, you know, that, like, yeah. that brain body connection where my brain was like, yeah, is, we got to do this. This is and happening. I, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, like I said, my contractions during those first couple laps around the unit, they came on, they came on very, very quickly and very, very hard. And, um, we were fortunate because, uh, the birthing suites at UCLA, which is where we gave birth, they have uh, ensuite showers. And so I know a lot of hospitals in Los Angeles don't have that, but we, util we used that shower. I was in the shower probably for a good four hours. Um, my mom and my husband took turns being in there with me and just, you know, pressing on my hips, um, you know, supporting my back. And then by the time I got out of the shower, pretty much I was, I was ready to push and she came fast. She came probably, I think I pushed for about 20 minutes and then she was out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. What were you, was there any part in your labor? Um, you know, we talk about the different phases of labor. When you look back on your labor, do those seem clear to you? Did you feel like transition. you had a transition or? Transition. And it was actually really funny because even though my mom hasn't, um, she, it's been a long time since she has, has worked with, with pregnant women, but it was really funny because, uh, so transition, obviously very, very difficult. I was, you know, it was kind of an out of body experience because those contractions are so close together and breaks are few and far between. And then I remember um, kind of coming out of that and my mom looked at me and she said, well, that's the first time I've seen her smile in a long time. She must be through transition. And, I, and, it, <laughs> and it was true, it was true. And it was, it was, it was kind of exactly like what we learned about in class where, you know, that's, um, it's the hardest, it's one of the hardest parts and it's mentally and physically draining. And, uh, but there was a real, there was like a real moment of clarity after, after transition where I, um, I could breathe and I could kind of come back to my body. And I knew, I knew that it was almost over and it was really, it, it, all of a sudden that energy kind of comes back a little bit, which was, it was, it was great. How did you like, um, how did you get through that? Cause there's a lot happening. Part of it's like, there's this physical opening of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. There's a baby coming down out of the pubic bone and, and rotating, right? There's a lot of like physical sensation going sure. on. And then there's this, um, I had to think about it like a mental yeah. component. There's like a, there's like a, and then and when I like to talk about birth, I don't know if I talked about it the same way then, but like so much, I think is taking to a deeper brainwave, the theta almost mm -hmm. Delta wave where you're in a slower brain wave, an altered brain state. So is that something that felt scary to you or like what helped you get through that? Was it just like a, well, I don't want to put any words in your mouth. So I actually, no, I was, I wouldn't say that I was ever scared. And I think that I, I uh, credit that to being so prepared. I mean, it was, we went through in, in your class, we went through those, you know, those simulations where, it was almost like I didn't even have to think because I knew it so well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there was never any fear, I would say, but there was, it was definitely, like I said, this kind of out of body experience where it was almost like 
my brain was working and remembering these things, but it was like, it was, it was, it was kind of like, I was watching myself from a different place, you know? And I, and I know that's kind of, that's not, you know, easily graspable to anybody who hasn't been through it. But, um, I, I remember after at a certain point getting out of the shower and feeling like I just needed to hunker down. Like I needed to be in one place and I didn't want to move anymore. I didn't want to walk. I didn't want to, you know, bounce on birthing ball. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do much. I just wanted to like be on the bed and my mom and the midwife were, um, kind of helping me like reposition myself, like, you know, on hands and knees and, um, you know, squatting and a little bit like, you know, uh, propped up on my back. And I was really grateful for that because I think that at that, during that time, I was so, I was so in, I was so, it was such, you know, I, it was almost like I wasn't in control of what was happening anymore. And so having those, those people around me who um, could kind of like manipulate me for, you know, for me was, was really helpful. And, um, you know, I don't remember it, I wasn't screaming. I wasn't yelling. I was just, it was very, it was very, um, it was like a slowdown of time. Yeah. Very internal, very internal. There was a lot of like introspective, like, you know, just trying to trying to stay there trying to be there and trying knowing that there was a little bit of like knowing that this was this was there was light at the end of the tunnel you know this was going to be over soon and that was one thing that was like one of the catchphrases that Nate had learned in your class was you know we're going to meet our baby soon like this is your word we're getting there we're going to meet our daughter soon And he, he was, you know, saying that to me. And I think for the first time while I was in that transitional period, that was the first time that I actually, like, I believed him, you know, like I believed him. I knew that was actually true. He wasn't just saying that because he was, you know, he had been trained to say that, like that was actually going to be the case. And I think that there was, um, yeah, no, it was just a really, it was really, it was a, it was intense, but it wasn't scary. Yeah, it isn't is an intense thing. I think um, for me, when I think about transition, I think sometimes people are afraid of that because they Mm -hmm. everyone's different how they approach that, right? And so I like to ask about that because what got you through that, you know, that period? It's different for everybody. I just I think that there's something about the repetitiveness of of your class. There's something about that. And, you know, when you're in it, when you're doing it, you're like, oh my God, we're going to do this again. Like, you know, we've already done this. Wait so a second, times. what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> we've gone through this so many times. Like we're going to do it again now. And, and, but now I get it. Like I get why that's so important is because in the moment, you know, you're not thinking clearly, you're not thinking logically necessarily. And so that kind of, um, that repetitiveness and how that's so ingrained, that's, part of what gets got me through it is just you know I wasn't scared it was just it was intense and but it was what I had expected and so it was um I there was a lot of comfort in the in the preparedness of all of it and then you get through transition you push your daughter out did that feel pretty straightforward and then what did it feel like um I, I, what was it like after your your child came out oh god it was amazing <laughs> I mean it was amazing so we you know we had a very specific birth plan I laugh now because you know we printed out like a stack of them and we're like handing them out like flyers to everybody just so everybody knew <laughs> oh you you're know. the janitor here you go here's our yeah exactly <laughs> like don't cut you know if you're not this very specific list of people do not come in the room and uh you know if you give my baby a pacifier I'm there's going to be issues and you know all of these things that we were very 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 sure of and one uh, you know one of the things is we wanted um like immediate skin to skin skin to skin contact and we wanted the golden hour where nobody bothered us for an hour and we wanted the delayed cord clamping and so um how long did you delay it for or did you want it delayed for 
So we didn't have specific parameters. And honestly, I don't remember. I just remember- Not really thinking about that then. When the midwife went to go clamp it, I was like, wait, 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 like, is this okay? Because it seemed really soon to me, you know, but it was, it was like a couple of minutes. And I, you know, in my mind, it was going to be like half an hour where this, you know, cord was going to be, before this cord was going to be clamped. And what the midwife told me was that um, they wait until like all of the blood stops pulsating through the cord before they, before they climb it. Uh, and then I remember, you know, I had Eleanor on my chest and I remember that there were, you know, there was, a, I had a couple of more contractions to deliver the placenta but I didn't even notice it. Like, you know, I didn't even know that that was happening anymore because all of these, these hormones were just pumping through me. And, and it was, it was, you know, I don't do drugs, but I can imagine that it's better than anything else in the world. I mean, that, that feeling of, um, that feeling right after giving birth is, is, I can't, I can't think of anything that would be similar or better. Yeah. And yeah. I was hungry. I got really, really hungry. So <laughs> hungry. Yeah. That's funny too, right? So hungry. Yes. Um, and so then after, you know, the cord had been clamped, uh, cut and, you know, so I, I, I demanded that ever, anything that they needed to do, she could be on my chest while they did it. So um, all of like the APGAR stuff, the, you know, the assessment, all of that stuff, they did it while she was uh, on my chest. And um, yeah, she rooted, she found my breast, she started breastfeeding. It was, it was, it was really magical. It was really wonderful. And I, you know, I, I hope that for everybody. I hope I, I want every, every single person, every birthing person to be able to have that experience because it was, um, I can't imagine not having it now, you know? And if I could just do that part over and over and over again, <laughs> that one, those, that, those moments after, yeah, I would absolutely. And I tell Nate that all the time. Like if I could just have, you know, if I could just do like the, the actual birthing part, and not the, not necessarily the pregnancy and not necessarily the raising of the child, but just, <laughs> just having the baby and that, you know, couple of hours after giving birth, I would, I would do it over and over. Yeah. Those are powerful hormones, right? Oh, it was amazing. Yes. It was so, it was so, I mean, surreal. And, um, you know, she came out and it was like, well, this is clearly the person that I have known for lifetimes, you know, immediately she felt very familiar and, um, and yeah, never looked back. So her, so she w went to labor on the sixth and then she was, she born on the seventh. Yeah. So she was born a little bit before the due date. Yeah. So one day before our due date. So we were, our due date was April 8th and she was born, um, at 8.04 AM on April 7th. Aww. She did such a good, did you ever talk with her about the birth? Is she interested in those things? Or is that like a yeah, birthday thing? Or? Yeah. I mean, she, she is at the, you know, she's at that age where she desperately thinks that she wants a sibling, you know, she's, oh. she, and we, we, <laughs> talked her, we talked to her a little bit about, you know, especially again on her birthday when, when we kind of reminisce about, about her birth. Um, we talked to her about, you know, and sh show her photos and stuff like that of, of when she came. And, you know, I think she's almost seven. So her like, I came out of your vagina is, yeah, yeah. Of, you know, <laughs> that she thinks it's hilarious. Um, but, you know, I also, because I, I work with, with uh, pregnant and, and new moms, I tell, I talk to her a lot about, you know, what I do at work and tell her stories about what I see. And I think she's, it intrigues her. The idea of like pregnancy and birth is, is intriguing to her. Yeah. So I feel like um, we don't value it in our culture and it's such an amazing thing to be able to give life and then nourish life at your yeah. best, you know, I mean, breastfeeding is another thing, which I think is so 
incredible right. and, and meaningful, you know, regardless of how the birth goes or sometimes the vice versa, sometimes the birth goes pretty well and breastfeeding is really challenging. Um, yeah. It's different for everybody. Um, so I feel, I mean, it just sounds like you felt like the classes prepared you. You had a very good experience. And I always, always hope for that for people in my class. Um, well, I think every single person in our class was able to have an unmedicated birth. I think that class was everybody. Yeah, every single person was able to to give birth naturally, and um, which is kind of unheard of, you know. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing when you look at at birthing statistics just in our country. Yeah, yeah. Was- what do you think? Like, I, what do you think is like, um, you know, based on what you learn in class? What do you think were the most important? things that you learned that you brought into your birth? So I would say that, and I already kind of touched on the whole, the idea of this repetitive, you know, training where we went. I think it's like training. karate or ballet or something. Totally. Right? Like, That's that where it over and over again. Yeah. It, 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 it becomes like you're going, you know, it becomes like a rehearsed dance where even if you are nervous, if you're scared, if, if, you know, you are having an out of body experience and any of those things could happen, but yet you, you're so prepared, you have the choreography so down that your body is still going to do it, you know? And I think that, that for me personally, I think that that was one of the biggest, um, reasons why I was able to get through it, you know, without ever thinking about getting an epidural or without ever even thinking that being induced was a possibility because, you know, I, my body was, it was, I was so prepared that it, it was going to happen. You know, my body was so prepared to do this and my, my brain had gone over it so many times that, that it was, it was almost like a natural progression at that point. Um, so that was that I would say that for us, that was one of the most helpful aspects of the class but then I would say the other helpful aspect was the diet because I don't know if you remember it was a long time ago but I came into your class uh with high blood pressure and so my I had been um my midwife had uh had me see you know an, an OB who was monitoring my blood pressure. And basically the OB was like, if you can't get your blood pressure down, then, you know, we're going to have to induce you at 36 weeks because, you know, preeclampsia and all of this stuff. And, um, they wanted to, you know, put me on blood pressure medication and they wanted me to do all of these things. And I first day in your class, I was like, Hey, Susan, this is my deal, you know? And, you were like, let's try this diet. Let's try the, I think it's the Brewer's diet. Is that yeah, what it is? Dr. Brewer's yeah. diet. And, um, man, I followed that to a T and I remember going into one of my prenatal checkups and my blood pressure was normal and it stayed normal from that point on. In fact, like all during my birth, my mom you know, every time they would check my blood pressure, my mom would be like, how is that possible? Because, you know, she, she has high blood pressure runs in our family. She was, you know, and my blood pressure was constantly totally normal. And she was just so impressed. She, she was so impressed that, that I was able to do that. And, um, I credit that diet in a big way. Was that like the increasing the protein? Was that it was increasing the protein. Or- it was just adding, you know, um, I remember the orange foods. And, and so I started eating a lot of sweet potatoes and interesting yams. And every day I would have a potato, like a baked potato. And um, yeah, the high protein. And, you know, I cut out caffeine completely. And that makes a big difference. Yeah. And just started like, and just started, um, you know, doing, doing like guided 
meditations and relaxation exercises on, you know, multiple times a day. And again, brain body connection. I, I think that there were multiple facets to that. And Absolutely. Um, I never had to, I never, there were never any, you know, pharmaceutical interventions that I had to take, which I was so grateful for. Yeah. I mean, if one needs them, we're lucky to have them, but it's yeah. nice to know what you can try first to see, to support yourself. And what was interesting is I was never given any of those, you know, after, and I understand that, that Western medicine, there are guidelines for, for, um, healthcare professionals where it's, you know, if this is the problem, then this is, this is the intervention. This is the answer. And this is, you know, there's, it's very specific. And, but I find it interesting that I was never even given those, any, any non-pharmaceutical options, even on top of pharmaceutical options, you know, there was never any, Hey, have you tried deep breathing exercises? Have you tried, um, you know, changing your diet? Have you tried, you know, any number of things that could have worked synergistically with Western medicine. Yes. It was never even mentioned to me until I was in your class. And so uh, that's one of those things. That's the other thing that I am just eternally grateful for. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Kind of brought back some memories when you said it. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I (laughs) was, I mean, I was terrified. I was terrified. Yeah, scary. That, that was what, that was going to be the thing that put a wrench in these, in these plans, you know, and, um, and it didn't. And so, yeah, it was great. That's so great. I'm so glad you shared your birth story with us. I, um, we're going to have another interview where you focus because you kind of, after giving birth, right, you kind of shifted your focus and what you want to do in your life right yes yeah Yeah. so now you're starting to become a certified nurse midwife I am I'm uh that's my goal is to become a CNM and so right now I'm in nursing school and I'm also uh taking the the class to become a certified breastfeeding counselor because the place that I work is uh they're aiming to become what's have a it's called a healthy baby certification Mm -hmm. and one of the one of the things is that every um every healthcare professional that works with with birthing moms has this bbc certification which i think is great and so yeah i'm learning a lot about breastfeeding i'm seeing a lot of of um pregnant laboring and new moms and it's it's great so awesome so i want to end this interview because we'll have another interview and we'll do work work, um another time um but uh what as a parent like what would what would you want new parents know people who are pregnant or thinking of of getting pregnant or about to give birth i mean i i think that my my biggest takeaway from my own pregnancy was and i keep saying this is that that brain body connection you know i think that it's so important to in some ways manifest what you want and no amount of preparation is too much it's you know it increases confidence and i will say that in my own experience both as a um you know laboring mom and as somebody who sees a lot of laboring moms ultimately that is something that makes a big difference in the way that you're you're your birth and postpartum experience goes is just the amount of of confidence that you come into the experience with and um so yeah i mean prepare just prepare and and um trust your body yeah i love all that um thank you so much for this interview Ooh, yeah it's so wonderful. that i forgot to say we said to me she's in her daughter's room right now right Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm actually in my daughter's room. She's at school. So I am sitting on like a, on a beanbag chair. Well, it's actually very inspirational for those who want to have children to be in their child's room, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, she, she loves rainbows. So I'm surrounded by rainbows, which I think is like an appropriate conversation. On many levels. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs)
definitely, definitely, definitely. And um, yes, I mean, there is nothing greater than, than uh, you know, bringing new life into this world, especially right now when, you know, that it's that kind of hope and, and um, joy is much needed. Absolutely. Every, every child is just a blessing. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Susan. I, it's always wonderful to talk to you and I love, you know, reliving my, my birth experience. I love reliving it too. I can never, I never get tired and of hearing that. And just want to thank you so much. All right. Goodbye.